Funky Kong approved. Hey guys, Alex here. 2023 is a thing now, and what better way to start off by not thinking about it? Instead, we're going to be looking at 2022, and what better way to do that than review Nintendo in 2022. We're going over month by month with Nintendo released, what was revealed, what wasn't revealed, as well as some other Switch games I played, and any other thing that happened. So, let's go! Okay, January. January in general didn't have a lot of stuff going for it. It was mostly spent by the community making predictions for the year and the next month's Nintendo Direct. However, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yeah, it's good. I don't think it's a masterpiece like other people, but I see the appeal. That may not draw if the game was a catching system. I see the appeal, but I didn't find it quite as good as other people. The problem more isn't the catching system itself, but rather how tedious it is. Basically, to move on into the next area of the game, you have to catch a ton of Pokemon, and it honestly got kind of boring. Like, just let me move on. I know some people didn't really have a problem with this, but in fact, you probably didn't. But I did, and it made the game a bit more tedious for me, and just unfun. And if it's not fun, why bother? My favorite part of the game were the noble boss fights. These were very action oriented and I loved them a lot, except there were a very minimal amount of them. I wish they pulled from them more. But I got praise Arceus because when it's not boring TS mess up a game, it's heck of fun. Like, I can't emphasize how fun this is. It has a lot of ambitious ideals, which I hope return a future Pokemon game, but sadly, they didn't use much from this great game for Gen 9. I mean, we saw the same with Pokemon Let's Go P2, where we had great mechanics that were underutilized in future entries, but this one hurts a lot more. Ultimately, Legends Arceus was really good, and it really stinks that the DS-ness sucked me out of it. I mean, I didn't even complete the post-game plot, and I haven't played it since March, so who knows, may I'll return to it sometime. Too bad Zelda will take me 22 billion years to complete. February was big. The community was hyped for Mario Kart 9 and its eventual reveal in the February Nintendo Direct. And that Direct happened. Mario Kart 9 was a reveal, obviously. There's a lot to unpack, so let's go. Firstly, Fire Emblem Warriors Free Hope seemed fine, I don't care really. Mario Strikers Battle League seemed cool, I mean it was soccer, and it was a new entry in the Mario Strikers series, which its last entry was on the Wii in 2007. Kirby and the Forgotten Lands Mouthful Mode seemed cool, and Kirby is the new best Nintendo thing of 2022. Splatoon Free Salmon Run was fine, I would prefer them to show a new mode or something like that. What we got was fine, but it didn't exactly hype me up. I mean, we saw the mode in Splatoon 2, and besides the new additions, it just looked the same. Nintendo Switch Sports, however, was something I never thought they would do, especially how late we were into the Switch Liz lifespan. However, something was definitely off. They replaced the Miis! The Miis were technically there, but they don't look really right. Instead, they, they were replaced by the Sportsmates, and I'll get to that more later. Is Xeno Blade Chronicles free? Okay, I predicted this. Yeah, that's it. The biggest reveal of the, the Nintendo Direct was the Mario Kart Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC. And the reactions were mixed. This was set to bring in 48 retro tracks into the game, doubling the amount of courses in the game. But at least based off the trailer, there was a certain sense of cheapness to it, as similar aesthetic to Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game. Mario Kart 8 Space Game looked great, and this new DLC was just trying to fix, fix something that wasn't broken. Sure, the amount of courses being added is high, but we've preferred something more similar to 8's original DLC where we got more tracks, characters, and kart parts. And it didn't help that just, people just wanted Mario Kart 9. Generally, the ways have gone, definitely gone better, but this wasn't the best first impression. Additionally, we also had a new Pokemon Presents. Well, Gen 9 is a thing now. Already? People probably could have just chilled with some Pokemon Legends Arceus DLC to last a year, but of course, that didn't happen. Gen 9 was revealed under the title Pokemon's Garden Wild, and once again, the reaction was definitely mixed. First, the positives. At first glance, these games look pretty good, and the new stars definitely got the hype of some people, but the main concern was definitely that it was too soon! Pokemon at the time just had just released Legends RC. It's just under a one month gap between release and reveal of the next game. 
which is absurd, especially when you consider the scale of the game. This was an open world game and at the max, it took three years to develop. But then again, you have to consider that there were also some people working on side projects. We've got Sword and Shield DLC and Legends Arceus. An average video game takes five years of dedicated time to make all this was for three years of multitasking. Game Freak is also a smaller studio, capping at 169 developers in March 2022, which isn't a lot. So short answer, it was too soon for an open world game. The argument against it that was new generations come out every three years, can but a consistent release of new generations doesn't matter at the end of the day. Well, Gen 9 did come out, and I'll get to that when I get to that. Also, I predicted this somehow happened. That's pretty epic. March was a pretty good month. Nothing like February, but some solid stuff. The main release this month was Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I'm probably going to pick up this game sometime this year, but here are my quick thoughts about the demo for now. Kirby and the Forgotten Lands demo was great. I played a little bit of the demo a while back and thought, mm, that's okay. But now, yo! Gray Strength is the level design. They're all very creative, or at least the chosen levels. The levels are very fun to reverse, and just the creativity is endless. The mouth mold mode is another highlight of the demo experience. Get to swallow card, traffic cones, and more, they're and they're used very creatively with, with the levels. In short, this demo is great, and I'm definitely going to pick up the full game soon. Triangle Strategy was also released, and I'm sorry, I don't really care. I'm tired of these Square Enix HD 2D JRPGs, they're also forgettable, and just as you can probably tell, I did not buy this. Waveland of the Mario Kart Deluxe Booster Course Pass released, and yeah, this is bad. Most of these tracks were really bad, and at the best, average. Free S yes, Toad Circuit, Tower Tokyo Blur, DS yes, Room Rich, and GBS Gargaran are all pretty trash. Tour Paris Promenade is average, Tour Ninja Highway is pretty good actually, but too much trick chart turns and its weird functioning layers make it not as fun to play. We Coconut Mall is Coconut Mall, except not as good, even though I don't mind it as much as other people. N64 Choco Mountain is my favorite track. It's at least ugly looking, most fun to race on, and overall most improved. But that's a given, given that's from the N64. Graphically, these are really great and contradicts everything in the base game had to offer. Additionally, these game courses are also really basic. They don't really feature any anti-gravity or underwater driving and just aren't the greatest. Luckily, this improves later, but gosh, looking back at Wave 1, it wasn't great. Uh, Buff Realm 2 was delayed to 2023. Look, I don't care. In fact, I think it's good. When something's delayed, I always view it as a good thing, because that means that if it's released delayed, it'll be more likely to turn out good. Plus, it gives me more time to beat the original and beat slash play other game me games in my gaming backlog. So yeah, don't mind this. In terms of our games, there wasn't much except Brian's Rescue Squad. Woo! April also had some pretty solid releases. The highlight of the month was Nintendo Switch Sports. But first, let's talk about the positives. Uh, the gameplay is great. I like it a ton. It has a very nice flow and the sports selection is flawed, but most are pretty fun. My favorite is Batman, even though I'm pretty trash at it. And all on online is decent. At launch, at least. That's all the positives. The sports mates aren't good replacements for the Mies. They just feel like Mies. If all the simplicity and energy that made the Mies great were gone, they're basically just corporate avatars. And corporate avatars aren't good. They're fine at the end of the day, but Mies are superior in every way. And I have to give them credit, Mies do appear, but they look really bad. But I guess they're better than the sports mates, so... Another big issue I have is the lack of content. There are only six sports in the base game, with that being tennis, volleyball, badminton, bo bowling, soccer, and chamber, with golf being added and then winter. All the sports are great, but come on, we need more! Wii Sports was released just under 14 years ago and had 12 sports. So, why the heck did this one, 2022, have half as much? Plus, tennis, badminton, and volleyball are practically the same sport. I see how you can make an argument about volleyball being different, but ten tennis and badminton? 
No, both are the same. The only difference that being that one's 1v1 and the other is 2v2. That's not a very good difference. And there's so many iconic ones left out, like basket baseball, basketball, and boxing. How can you have a Wii Sports game without boxing? This lack of content can potentially be solved with free updates, but when it takes a half a year to add golf, yeah, I don't think we're going to be getting much content. Plus, it just it shouldn't be the case. The content should be full at release. And really, if you're going to release your game unfinished and update it to finish it after it's released, then something's messed up. Nintendo Switch was overall a big corporate mess that I did not enjoy. Okay, bye. In terms of third-party games, there was some decent stuff released. I borrowed my brother's copy of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga and played the prequels. It was fine. You're basically just playing for the Star Wars movies as a character, so it's cool. I played it for a couple hours and don't remember much about it, so moving on. We also had a Splatoon 3 trailer, which wasn't much of a trailer, but said it was more of like a glorified gameplay video. It showed off a ton of new specials and revealed the release date of September 9th. This was fine, but I was expecting a way earlier release, like in June or July. Overall, pretty solid enough. Nothing crazy, but Nintendo Switch Sports was definitely a bit disappointing. Also, um, the Mario movie was all right. Uh, yeah, I don't really care. It's fine. Man, this month had nothing. No big releases and no noble third-party releases or reveals or anything, which is really weird. Ironically enough, we had a game called Best Month Ever, but this was probably the worst month ever in terms of Switch games, which is fine. Nintendo was just getting ready for e the big E3 season. Huge happened. E3 didn't. So yeah, E3 was cancelled, but still, everyone thought Nintendo would just have their usual tune direct regardless of E3. It just seemed like common sense. Gosh, I hate being wrong. Instead, Nintendo decided to sprinkle all their announcements across the summer, as well as some in the September Direct. And the third party games got their own showcase. Look, I wasn't excited for this, Nintendo had done this previously in June of 2020, but all the games were really bad and I just didn't like it. So yeah, it happened. The only thing I cared about was Minecraft Legends. No, I'm joking. There was actually some really cool stuff revealed here. I mean, if you were hyped for it, I was probably hyped for it. The coolest reveal was probably Pac-Man World Repack. This was a remake of a late 90s Pac-Man 3D platformer, which was exclusive to PlayStation consoles besides the GBA and Windows PCs in South Korea. There's also some new trailers for some previously announced games like Mario Plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, Sonic Frontiers, and Live Alive. Love Alive is an RPG that has a really interesting concept. You go throughout history, throughout time periods, which all intertwine to one big climax. Too bad the demo's too hard. My personal favorite real deal was a game called Blanc. This is a console exclusive coming in February 2023, and oh my gosh, this game looks really good. It's developed by indie developers Cassus Ludi and looks great. It's supposed to be this like cooperative game where you and possibly another player play as a wolf cut, cup and a fawn as you traverse different environments. It also has an amazing art style that I love. This one's only 15 bucks, so when this one releases, yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. Anyway, I can't wait till early 2024 to talk about it. That'll be fun. Dune also brought us a new Xenoblade Chronicles free direct, and I don't care. Good for you, Xenoblade fans, but who am I kidding? A direct for a game that I was interested in to begin with. Speaking of RPGs, we have a new Fire Emblem Warriors game called Fire Emblem Warriors Free Hopes. Meh. I don't care. Mario Strikers Battle League is another game I chose to not get. Oh look, there's a demo. The demo was okay, I'm not too great at it, and the gameplay is pretty bare bones. I mean, it's just Mario Play Soccer, that's it. A big complaint about the regular game is the lack of content. They made this up over like three updates. But I don't know if they actually did make it up. I think this game is like best remembered by the memes. You know, this and uh, this, which is fine, it's something, but if the arguably the best thing about your game is the memes, then well, why? <laughs> Overall, it really stinks that this game had to be so bare bones, because yeah, this was a comeback of the series and the lack of content kind of ruined it. 
This month was uh, also a huge month for third-party games. We have Sonic Origins, Omori, Capcom Final Collection, and oh my gosh, Fall Guys! Fall Guys was the highlight of the summer. It had the free release this month, and gosh, I absolutely adore this game. It's definitely lost some of its initial charm from its original free release, but it's still great. This game is a really unique take on the Battle Royale format, where you take on multiple rounds try and call qualify for these hobbies. It's a really fun and addictive game. There aren't many performance issues on Switch, and I honestly really enjoy it. That's a creative art style, and yeah, what else is there to say? It's Fall Guys. I really want more games like Fall Guys, because games with uniqueness will always hop over games that frame corporate blandness like Fortnite or Nintendo Switch Sports. Overall, Fall Guys is a fun and pretty cool free port for on Nintendo Switch. There's also Rapids Party of Legends. Hey, where are the Mario Plus uh, Rapids fans at? July, it was a July. Yeah, it was pretty nothing month. Oh yeah, the Xenoblade 3 happened. Hey, why did all the games with originals in 2017 get sequels this year? Okay, look, I didn't get this game. It reviewed pretty well, but look, there's other games I want to play. It's just not my type of game. So yeah, maybe I'll pick it up sometime when it's cheaper. Anyway, moving on. August was a huge month. Firstly, Pokemon had a new Pokemon presents where they showed off a ton of new information about Pokemon Storm and Violet. This was pretty cool, showing off a ton of new stuff as well as a new terrestrializing gimmick. Look, I don't really like terrestrializing. Basically, when you activate a Terror Orb, it changes to its Terror type and turns all crystal-y. I found this gimmick really weird and way less cool compared to Mega Evolution, Z moves, and even Dynamax. Also, the way he Pokemon looks after terrestrializing is really weird. I don't like the big goofy hats they wear. It's, it's, I guess it's good for competitive Pokemon, but I don't play Pokemon to play competitively. I, I don't really like terrestrializing, and that's that, and it's sort of disappointing that the game just sort of surrounded it. Besides that, it revealed some new Pokemon and characters, but nothing crazy. We also had a Splatoon Free Direct. Yeah, it was a Splatoon Free Direct. This revealed a bunch of new stuff about the game. New stages, new weapons, and stuff. The biggest reveal was new idols, Deep Cup. I mean, Fry and Shivers, okay? But Big Man! Gosh, I love Big Man. He definitely saved this group for me. I don't know why I love this guy so much, I just do. I mean, he's- it's Big Man. Well, what else am I supposed to say? They ended their draft off of a Splatfest segment where they revealed the Tricolor Turf Bore game mode. Tricolor Turf War was this new game mode for the second half of Splatfest where one winning te Splatfest team of four will fight against two teams of two from the other Splatfest teams. They then revealed a Splatfest World premiere later that month. A Splatfest World premiere was fine, however, the Tricolor Turf War was really, really bad. It was super one-sided and just not fun to play. The big release for me, though, was the Mario Kart Deluxe DLC's Wave 2, and I already made a video about it. This was definitely the most hyped up thing for Nintendo's summer, and yeah, overall it's a pretty good and overall improvement from Wave 1. The graphics especially are good. Like, yeah, this isn't as good as a space game, but it's good and sort of excusable because in, g in general, these chat tracks just play better and just are generally more interesting. DS Wall DG Pinball is easily the best looking one here, though. We also had Kirby's Dream Buffet. I played a demo at GameStop and that was cool. Kind of reminded me of Fall Guys, and you know how I feel about Fall Guys. Yeah, but that's it. September was big. The big release this month was Splatoon 3. And yeah, it definitely was more Splatoon. Splatoon 3's gameplay, besides the new weapons, is the same was from Splatoon 2, which is fine. Splatoon's ga gameplay was always great from the start, no team to change it really, but there's nothing there of friending the two. There's nothing new really in this game, it was really just more Splatoon, and that's fine, but it's not exactly the most interesting thing when it's pretty much the same as Splatoon 2. And that's why I was sort of unengaged when it first released, it was just Splatoon. Some could argue that the new weapons weren't a new release, but I disagree because at the end of the day, they didn't change the core Splatoon formula. Online play is fun, but kind of bad. Disconnects are common like, bruh, it makes online play really disappointing. Additionally, turn 4 can definitely get really one-sided and not fun at some moments. The main changes in this one are quality of life improvements, stuff like actually moving around in the lobby, skipping the news, and our dropping system. 
but those really don't really warrant a new release either. Despite my negative thoughts, I think the game is great, but it's more because it's Splatoon and Splatoon always had great gunplay. The new weapons here are pretty cool, the tri steering or, or the bow is fine, but I personally think the Splaton is pretty cool. My favorite special is probably the crab tank cause crab and the tactical order cause yummy soda. I really like the music in this one. I wasn't sure about the songs before release, but they're honestly a bop, and in some areas, most notably, the battle music is better than Splatoon 2's. The visuals have also been fine-tuned. Link looks kinda glossy, and I love the look of the game. I'm not as big of a fan of that as the chaotic wasteland as others are, are but it's not horrible. The hero mode actually surprised me, though. It basically took the best of both worlds, so Splatoon 2's hero mode with its hub and Oxo expansion DLC with its more creative level design and story. This is definitely one of the this is definitely one of the best, if not the best, hero mode ever in any Splatoon game. I love it a lot. The boss has actually took me multiple tries, which is something I couldn't say about Splatoon's bosses. And the climax is really gay. Great to put simply and spoiler free. Splatoon 3 generally has done really well, winning Best Multiplayer Game at the Game Awards and being critically acclaimed. I feel like that's because it's more Splatoon, and Splatoon was always a creative, fun, and just generally great game. But I just wanted more! Nothing game-changing, but maybe a separate battle royale mode or an ambitious new mechanic? I just feel more Splatoon isn't enough to order a new game to release on the same console. It's still a good game, but I would much rather prefer some new DLC for Splatoon 2 or new spin-offs. And besides Splatoon 3, there wasn't much, however, we did have stuff like Ooblets, Tunic, Lego Brawls, Temtem and Paw Patrol Grand Prix. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, new direct was here. This mostly revealed a bunch of 2023 games as well as some free updates from previously released 2022 games slash DLC. Fire Emblem Engage started off the direct. I'm tired of seeing Fire Emblem. I don't care for your stupid generic anime sword fighters. This game revolves around like summoning old characters for your rings, but honestly, I don't care in the most it will gal be is Oh yeah, they're in Smash Bros, right? Anyway, I'm gonna be make going to make a really wacky and bad prediction that this game is going to be a really cheap gosh grab pandered for nostalgic fans and will be centered around gotcha mechanics. Two courses of the Mario Kart Deluxe DLC Way 3 were shown off. They weren't the most hyped courses in the world, I would have been more excited they showed off Berlin Byways and Rock Rock Mountain instead of but whatever Nintendo, you do you. N64 games for the NSO N64 services were also shown off. We had classics like Pilot Wing 64, Mario Party 1, 2, and 3, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, 1080 Snowboarding, Excite Bike 64, and GoldenEye. GoldenEye specifically had people hyped. I didn't hear about it until this very direct, so that's cool. None of these games are actually going to get me to pay for the service, because that's a lot of cash, and I have other fish to fry. Up next, we have Pikmin 4. Oh look, an obscure franchise I don't really care about. Okay, Pikmin is a really niche franchise. Its last release was Pikmin 3 in 2013 on the Wii U. The last game we've gotten was Pikmin 3 Deluxe in 2017 on the Switch. This was a highly anticipated sequel. I'm happy for Pikmin fans. Unfortunately, I don't care. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, and yes. Graphically, this game looks awesome. This is a remake of a Wii game. It looks great. It seems cool. Can't wait to try it out. The last announcement was a new trailer for on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. This revealed the name. Yeah, now it's officially called Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The main focus point of the trailer was the sky and how the game will be focusing on it more. I think this concept is great. I mean, the sky's the limit for how much ideas they could do with this. The sky focus will offer some for some pretty creative platforming and puzzles. Also, you get to Fortnite drop, and what's with Nintendo's obsession with dropping off sky? Ah, pretty good direct, but that's the cream of the crop when it comes to reveals. The old direct just seemed a bit off. The pacing just was really weird, and not to mention the overuse of JPAR RPGs and farm sims. Like, oh my gosh, it just got so boring and made saying it through it like a fitness test. It was just a tedious mess of a presentation. The first party reveals just didn't really get me hyped, except Tears of the Kingdom and maybe the Mario Kart stuff. And that's it. In conclusion, I really made Nintendo Direct 
Come, come some cool stuff, but nothing crazy. All right, let's talk about October. October's big release of the month was Mario Plus Rapid Sparks of Hope. And yeah, seems cool, but just not my type of game. And the rabbits are weird. Being a free release, I'm not into being uh, like I was so. Anyway, we had the very first trailer for the Mario movie. This was only a teaser and didn't leave much of an impact. Do you yield? Didn't ask. The voice acting in this one was mostly great, except Chris Pratt's Mario, whose voice just doesn't fit. This is a problem. Because he's like the main character of the story and will probably get the most screen time. The animation looks real good. It's easily Illumination's best looking movie. I hope it follows through in the other departments. I mean, it just looks pleasing to the eyes. I guess I voice my main criticism with what we've seen. First off, it's made by Illumination. Illumination has definitely made some pretty mediocre movies in the past decade or so. They've definitely stopped up their game with Scene 2 and Minions Rise of Brew, both being some of their better movies. My main issue comes down to the crew. First, the directors of this movie, Aaron Harvoth and Michael Jelenic, don't have the greatest track record. They're known for Teen Titans Go and its movie. Teen Titans Go isn't that good. I'm just going to be frank with that. And while its movie was actually kind of decent, it's not the greatest thing in the world either. Our either Maha Matthew Pogle, while not as bad as the directors, isn't the greatest either. He's known for Lego Movie 2, which was not that great, and the uh, Minions Rise of Gru. I'll let you determine if that's a good thing or not. I'm casually optimistic about this movie. I really hope it'll turn out great, but Lumination and its crew really worry me. November wasn't the biggest muff for Nintendo. Sonic Frontiers released. I haven't played it yet. Pokemon's Garden Violet was a big thing of the month, and uh, where do I begin? Let's start with the most controversial thing with these games, and that's the performance. The performance are a huge issue here. There's a ton of bugs and crashing issues, not to mention the glitches. And yeah, the glitches are funny, I'll give them that, but they shouldn't be there. Eventually, some parts of the game have a very bad frame rate and a low draw distance, I haven't definitely noticed the bugs as much as others, but this is a problem and just shouldn't be in here in the first place. It just screams imperfections. The graphics are also not the greatest. A lot of the overworld looks sort of ugly while the indoor or environments look pretty good. You don't get much of those. And staring at the ugly overworld doesn't exactly put you in the right mood. Graphics are still fine, but still, there's more parts that just scream imperfections, but I'll mention that in my full Garden Violet review. However, the game is immediately really fun. It's a fun time just exploring the open world and seeing the glitches online. Yeah, it's immediately pretty funny. The characters and story definitely got more depth than Gen 8, and yeah, there's a ton of characters here. Some of them are a bit forgettable, but whatever. The flaws, though, really do show that it should have been delayed. I'm going to be still going to be doing a full review of this game soon, probably in February. So sorry if my thoughts seem a bit mis minimal, since I want to really full fully get into it once I do that. I still haven't been the game, although I'm very close and probably will be being it soon. We also had a new Super Mario Bros. movie trailer, and uh, it was fine. Here's my quick thoughts on what was revealed. Donkey Kong looks great. I like his goofy design, and it's probably gonna be one of the best parts of the movie. Pete sounds great, looks great, but Donkey Kong is supreme. Seems like she's gonna have a big role in the movie. Mark right here is here too. Call it. Animation looks as great as ever. Lots of covers in this one, and mmm, colors were candy to my eyes. But here's my main confusion. Why did this become a meme of all things? Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with a hat with the letter of his first name on it? <laughs> because I don't. <laughs> like, is it is a meme that Luigi is screaming or that Luigi secretly knows who Mario is? I don't get it. Like, oh, it's not funny. Why do you guys think it is funny? Why? I I don't get the joke. What? Other than that, it's a pretty alright trailer. The Mario movie still looks good. December, the last month of the year, aka the most recent month of 2022. December didn't have much 
which is fine. Normally, holiday titles release in October and November, so new games here are fine. We did see the release of Way Free the Mario 8 Deluxe DLC, and my opinions haven't really changed, so go watch the Way Free video if you haven't already. But in short, all the tracks were really good besides the four city ones. And while 3S Rainbow Road is back, graphically these game courses look stellar, especially 3S Rainbow Road, GBA, Blue Lake, Wee Maple Treeway, and Corn Mary Mountain. Definitely a huge improvement. We finally also had the golf update for Nintendo Switch Sports. This update took a long time. I don't understand how it took so long. Like, it's golf. How hard is golf to make? I don't care, though. The big thing this month it was the Game Awards 2022. Nintendo usually doesn't have a prevalence in the, this show. Usually only appearing in stuff like Best Family Game. But this year, they were nominated and won, for, and won a lot of stuff. Best multiplayer went to Splatoon 3, best family game went to Kirby and the Forgotten Land, most anticipated game went to Breath of the Wild 2. Nintendo definitely had a large prevalence in this one. We also got some reveals from them as well. First off, a new clip of the new Super Mario Bros. movie. And really, I'm tired of seeing this movie three times in a row for the last three months. Like, give me a rest, Lumination! Anyway, the actual clip is cool. We had a lot of references to older Mario games being stripped, which will hopefully be seen in the actual movie. There wasn't much besides that in this clip. Bayonetta Origins series and The Lost Damon was shown off for the first time. The Bayonetta fan happy for Bayonetta fans. I had to say something, well, I like the storybook art style I was going for. Very nice. Overall, December wasn't much, but what we did get was pretty good. And that wraps up the year. Overall, this year was packed with content. Each month had some unity to offer, except May for some reason. It was an amazing year for some pretty good games. Nintendo definitely was a bit of a cheapskate this year, as we got some pretty cheap stuff. And while that's definitely not a good thing, there is a lot of good stuff still here. But how about 2023? 2023 is looking pretty good for Nintendo. Probably can't top this year since this year had a stellar amount of games and just DOS. But I don't know. But 2023 is definitely looking good for Nintendo, and I can't, can't wait to go along and cover it more this year. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for the support in 2022. YouTube and my channel was probably one of the best parts, and you know what? This year's going to be great. I can tell, because guess what's bigger than 2022? 2023, yeah!